Hiya folks, I've just bought this um, Astra 1.8 convertible Bertone model for me missus. I was going to flip it, but um, she wants to keep it now because it's a soft top. And uh, what we're going to do today is change the timing belt and also put a new water pump on it as well because it's done around 77,000 miles, so it's probably due one. I don't know if it's had one in the past, so I'm not going to take that chance seeing as we're going to keep the car. So that's what we're going to do today. I'll see you in a minute. Right, so I bought this car initially to flip. I paid £450 for it, and I want to spend as little as possible. I'm going to treat this as a flipping car. I'm going to be doing some little bodywork issues with it. It's not running correctly at the moment. It feels very woolly when you're driving it along, and it's got a, like a, a fluttering tick over from when it starts from cold. We've not investigated that yet, but I will do that after we've done the most essential thing, which is the timing belt and the water pump. Now, as I said to you, I don't know whether or not it's had a timing belt in the past. But I'm not going to take that chance. So I'm going to put a new kit on it, seeing as we're going to keep the car. And uh, that's what we're going to do in today's video. So this is what I've got today to do the job. I've ordered one of those little tool trolleys. So uh, until then, I'm just going to use this table because I do hate working on the floor. Normally, I'm down on the floor there. So let's just run you through roughly what I've got here. I've got a general purpose socket set there. I've got some long sockets there if I need them. Uh, we've got basic hand tools there, screwdrivers, pliers, hammers, stuff like that. Pair of pliers, grips. I've got a, a breaker bar there in case we get some tight bolts. I've got the power grip kit from Gators. This is um, obviously the timing belt kit complete with the water pump and the ancillary pulleys as well. So we've got that. And I've also got the uh, camshaft locking tool and little blocks. The only thing I'm really interested in this is uh, this one. This is the camshaft locking tool, which sits in the back of the camshaft, but um, I'm not going to be using that because I'm going to just rely on setting it up on its timing marks and then using these little blocks to put in between the, the inlet and the outlet sprockets, and uh, that will lock them in position. I'd have to take the rocker cover off to use that and I don't really want to have to go down that road and I don't need to anyway. So that's what we've got there. I've got my list of instructions down there. I've wrote down a sequence of orders, which I normally do. Uh, we've got some WD-40. I've got some uh, gloves, which I'm going to try and use today. I've got some cloth. And I've also got a new drive belt because we've got to be taking the drive belt off as well. So that's all the stuff. Now, if you can see here, I've actually taken this wing off because that wing has got damage on it. Also, I'm taking the uh, wing off to... Uh, the paint factors to get color color match because we've used the color code for this because there's a few scuffs around it which I want to repair and also repair on that wing but uh, you'll see that in a different video but uh, that's why the wings off you won't be taking the wing off all you've got to take off is the wheel and also the there's an inner liner which goes around the inside here which I've also taken off as well and there's also this little line uh, this little inner liner there which covers up the lower pulley there so I think they look like eight mils there. So there's two eight mils there. And I think it's actually bolted onto the subframe as well underneath. So I'm just going to take this out, uh, cover off and then uh, we'll start the actual taking the thing apart. The car is jacked up and it's on axle stands, as you can see. There we go, down there. So just get the bonnet up in the air. Just show you what we've got to deal with, first of all. So as I've said before, this is the 1.8 Ecotech engine and it's a twin overhead camshaft engine. That cover's got to come off, the airbox has got to come out. We've got the engine bracket there, which holds the engine to the uh, body. That's got to come off as well. The auxiliary drive belt and the timing chest cover lower down, the lower pulley's got to come off. We've got to drain the cooling system out because we are taking the water pump out. So that's all what I'm gonna do. I'll put you on a bit of time lapse for that, I think, and um, then I'll make a start. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, so there's the tray off now. As you can see, there's two bolts on the side there and there's two underneath as well. All four of them are eight mils. And the last one I got out, the one at the back there, so tight, the head had uh, worn away. Where is it? Let's show you. That one there. And it would have meant cutting into it, but all I did was give it a tweak side to side and it actually loosened it off. As you can see, they're very coarse threads on them. So it should loosen it off enough for you to get a pair of pliers or even the socket back on. So I've got that off anyway. And we've got a little magnetic tray to put our screws in just to make sure we know where everything is. And what we want to do now is to drain the radiator out. Now we're under the front of the car there and I don't know whether you can see it or not. There's a little red valve there. 
and a little spout coming off it so that when you undo that valve water will come out of there so i've just got a bit of hose pipe i'm going to connect onto there into my container which is here and drain all the uh coolant out of the uh, radiator so i'm going to do that now right okay so let's put a bit of hose on there just so we can direct our antifreeze into our container now this is only a plastic valve so i don't want to crank it hard or nothing so just nip it open there we go now i can open it with my hand and drain everything out hopefully right and i'm just going to go up and open the coolant expansion bottle open the lid on that and that should hopefully come out a lot quicker right so we're going to remove the uh, engine top cover there that's held on by two torque screws and also the uh, oil filler cap has to come off as well before you can take that off just replace that and we're also going to remove the uh, the breather pipe from the top of the uh, throttle body there and also remove the big jubilee clamp from the top of the throttle body and just pull that apart then we've got to remove the air box that's uh, a little bit awkward it can be it sits on rubber bungs there uh sits right in plastic clips right so that's the air box out now and that gives us a lot more things to see i say that we just had to pull that pipe out of the uh, front of the air box as well right that's the uh the mass airflow sensor so that's out of the way uh everything else looking looking okay at the moment that one's broken off there that lug look off of the air box up there you go look that tongue's broken off of the front of that they do happen they're quite they can be quite tight to get in and out of them so they're only pushed in and there's one down there as well so just be aware of that all right well we're nearly out with the water now so what i want to do now is remove the engine mount which is here because we're going to need to obviously take this cover off and get good access to here so what i'm going to do is just jack the engine up and just support the engine all right so let's get that under there and i want to put a bit of wood under there because this is a cast aluminium sump by the looks of it so that'll just ensure that i don't uh, do any damage let's go that way because of the exhaust there we go so i'll just take that up and that'll literally just support the engine and make sure that uh, it doesn't drop when we uh, take the engine mount off There we go, that's the engine mount out. Six bolts holding that in. And they are E16s. Right, I want to take off this um, auxiliary drive belt now. So uh, there's a 15mm nut down there on the pulley. So let's put that on there. And just turn it anti clockwise. And that detensions the belt. There you go. I'll just hook it over. And there you go. So that's the tensioner. We're gonna to need to take that off in a minute anyway. So uh, just to let you know, make sure you know the uh, route of the belt so that you can uh, remember the way that it goes back on. If not, just take a picture and that way you'll know for sure. Uh, this belt actually doesn't look too bad to be honest with you, but um, cause I've got a new one, I'm gonna be putting it on. Right, so I'm gonna remove the auxiliary drive belt tensioner now, which is uh, a E16 bolt. I'm sorry about the plane noise, if you can hear planes going above. It's the old Eurofighter out practicing. So if I just undo that there. Right, and lift that out. It can come out the top way, as you can see in a minute. There we go. And it comes out with, as I say, two little locating dowels there. So make sure you get them back in when you put it back on. And that's it there. Right, okay then, so we've got to remove the lower pulley now, and that is a E18 socket on there. Now, I didn't need to lower the engine, but you may need to just drop the jack down and just drop the uh, engine low enough so you can gain access to that. Now, again, I'm going to need a bit of help here because um, I haven't got an impact gun. So Gary's going to sit inside the car, put it in fourth gear, put the handbrake on, put his foot on the brake, while I attempt to undo this with the only socket I've got available, which is a, a 3 8 size bar, 
and breaker bar, so we're gonna have to play it by ear. I have snapped one of these before, it should be half inch really, but we'll see how we go. All right, fourth gear and brake on. Oh, I think we got it, have we? I think we turned it. Yes, there we go, folks. That's how you do it without an impact gun. As I say, not everyone's got an impact gun, you see. And even with the limited tools that I've got here, I've got a windy gun and I've got a new compressor, but my windy gun's not working properly. And also I haven't got a half inch drive, so I've had to make do with what I've got. You could probably have to do the same. So now we've loosened it, let's undo it. And it looks like it's just gonna fall off. This I think is the hardest part of the job, if you don't know how to undo this, to be honest with you, so. The bolt out, we're gonna need to put that in in a minute to line the timer marks up. So there we go, it is notched. That notches onto a little lug on the uh, actual crankshaft lower sprocket. Now I wanna put that bolt back in. The time mark, as you can see, is that pointed one there. And if you look down here, on the lower part of the pulley housing, you should see the little corresponding mark, which that pointer there has got to line up with there. And that's what we've got to do. So I don't need the washer for that, take that off. Put the bolt back in. As we tighten that bolt up. And then we'll turn it over until then marks line up. There we go, coming up to it now. There we go. So there you go, that's the timing marks lined up on the crankshaft. But when you come up here, you can see the timing marks are on the outside there, look. See, the little, dot, the little dots there are on the outside. So that shows we're 180 degrees out because we want the two little dots to appear in the middle. So I'm gonna turn the crank over again because it rotates twice to this once until we get both of them dots lining up in the middle. Right, okay, I've rotated it around the second time. And now, let's have a look at these dots. As you can see, they're both in the center now, which means that I can put the little timing blocks to hold these in place in there now. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Right, so here's our blocks. Now, as you can see, they uh, interlock into each other. So we've got to get them in there, in their correct order. Let's try that one first, shall we, in there? Is that gonna go in? But they don't sort of fit in there because they've got this webbing on here, look. Look, see that webbing's in the way, look. So for my one, they don't actually fit in properly. They can't physically go in and lock together. And what's that all about then, eh? Because they're supposed to lock together and that webbing in between mine is stopping it from going in. Well, there you go. So it just shows you. I'm going to have to abort mission with these. And I did want to show you with it using these uh, proper cam tools. So not unless I'm doing it wrong, but I don't think I am. Because that definitely don't go in there. So the other way to have done it would be to take the rocker cover off, which I don't really want to do because I've got a rocker cover gasket, and lock the camshafts in place by um, using that bar at the back. When you take this off, there's one, two, three, four, five, six there, six bolts there. You've got to take the um, coil pack off as well. And as I say, I haven't got a gasket, so I'm confident. If you're not confident, use the camshaft locking tool, which at the back of each of these camshafts here, coming along here, you would be able to slide that in, the end of the camshafts, and that, that should lock the camshafts in place then. But me, I'm not gonna do that because I'm happy that I can line them marks up manually, knowing that I can see them marks nice and clearly, and they're both level. And the same goes for the uh, crankshaft. I can see the crankshaft measurements uh, marks down there. So I'm happy that I can line them up and get that belt back on. So now I've got that lower pulley off, I'm now gonna undo one more little torx bit in the middle there and I think this cover should just come off. Right, let's get that undone. There we go, that's an E8 torx bit. I'm hoping this will just ping off now. 
some plastic clips. Right, I'm underneath the car at the moment. There we go. There's two. Three. I think there's one at the top. And what you do is stick a screwdriver in. There we go. So let's get that out of the way. Stick a screwdriver in and then lever the casing outwards like that because there's a little catch in there if you can see look and that's how they work i'm now going to slacken the tensioner bolt that's the center one there and that will allow me to take the tensioner out and then i can feed the belt off but look at the uh, root of it first of all just so that you do know we're still on our timing marks there nothing's turned and the crankshaft pulley is still straight so i'm happy with that so i'm going to proceed to undo that bolt down there and then that will take the tensioner mechanism out. Right, okay, let's try and get in there. I haven't got a T40 socket, so I'm having to use this adjust this um, T40 wrench. Here we go. There we go. That's got it. The other belt's just slackened off there. I'm trying to get this so that you can see as much as you can, you see. It's a bit awkward for me the way I'm having to do this. If I'm going to be working on a lot more voxels, there's certain... Uh, sockets that you need you know they tend to favour the torques and the uh the e sockets normally i'd put this on my battery wrench and it'll whiz it out in no time there she comes there we go that's the tensioner pulley mechanism now out and i will show you this here now but i'll also show you at the end you've got that's the bolt that holds it in and you must get that little lug there sits in a little hole in the bottom of the engine block. If you don't get that in, then you're never gonna get the belt timed up. So what you do, you when you come to put this back in, you tighten it up hand tight. You then get a little socket in there. I think it looks like a five mil Allen bolt. And you lift this up and that little pointer there, if you can see on there, it says use belt, new belt. There's two little markings there. If you're putting a new belt on, you line that pointer up to where it says new belt there. You can see that? If you're going to put the existing belt on, which I can't see why you'd really want to do that, you always take the belt off and put a new belt on. Lift the Allen key up until that pointer points to where it says new belt. And once you've got that, hold it in position and then nip up your main T40 and that should hold everything in place and tension your belt up. So that's that. So we've got two additional pulleys here. We've got these two pulleys, these little idler pulleys here. Is it a T45? Yep. So let's take that one off. Oh, there we go. There we go. Here we go. That's that one. I always like to spin them as well, see if they was on their way out. That one actually feels fine. And then this one over here is an E socket again. Right, that one's an E10. Here we go. Come on, baby. That should come under by hand pretty easily. Right, let's lift that one out of the way. So there's the difference. The one on the left hand is bigger than the one on the right. There you go. And before we can slip the belt off, we want to unplug the um, camshaft sensor there. It's plugged into up here. Again, it's just another of these stupid clips to come off. I'm trying to show you the stuff that no one else normally shows you, you see. Off you come. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's get that out of the way. Little things like this that take the time, you see. There we go. Uh, silly little clip like that. That should you should be able to just push that in easily like that. And see the way it lifts up, but you normally have to get a screwdriver under the side and help it up, lift it up to get it off. There we go, that's that. And hopefully this should just slide out of its holder. Not the easiest thing in the world to get out, is it? There we go. There we go. Look at that. Look. Clip top and bottom. Again, clip top and bottom. Squeeze it like that with a pair of grips, and then you can slide it out that way, sidewards. There you go. Another thing they don't show you, 
Now we're ready to lift the belt out. Our timing marks have moved. This pull is moved, I can see. So I'm going to pull that one back up when we come to put the belt on, just to ease that one back up into position. Because as I say, that one has moved. So I'm not worried about that at the moment because we're not timing it up yet. We're just taking the belt off. So around she goes. Pull that through there. Don't forget to put that back through again. There we go. Get it off the bottom and there we go and to be honest with you it doesn't look too bad it must have been changed because this is a gate again exactly the same as what i'm putting on and the water pump looks pretty new to be honest with you down there so with with better belt and braces it has had a new kit on it has had a new timing belt but you can never be too sure so i'm going to put it on anyway at least we definitely know that we're going to be okay right okay so now we want to get the water pump out we're going to lose a bit of water coming out of the block. We've drained the radiator out, as you well know. So this has got to be changed. All right, so these three bolts holding the water pump in are five mils. Well, on this they are anyway, so let's get them undone. Yeah, it's easier from below to do these. So we just uh, undo them on there. Third one's up here. Let's get that in there. It's a little bit awkward, that one. For this top left hand one here, I've had to uh, change my socket to a small one because uh, the ones I got didn't fit in. So I'll show you what I've used in a minute. Let's get the bolt out first. There's the one at the back. And I've had to get over it using a little quarter drive with a little screwdriver bit extension into a little quarter inch socket. We have a five mil Allen key. Let's try and give it a little wiggle first. Well, it shouldn't be in too much if it's a new pump. There we go, look at that. We're gonna get water come out, as I say, but just beware for that, coming out of the block. And that is the water pump out. Looks to me like a pretty new pump. Yeah, look at that. Rubber O-ring in there. That's what we got to uh, make sure we got the new one in. And that's it, everything's out. We'll clean that gasket face up along here and that seal ring air edge there with some uh, wire wall before we put it back in. And then we can start the procedure for putting it all back together. For a minute, right. So what we've got is our brand new belt there. Always wise just to measure your old belt against your new belt as well. Some of these come with um, arrows on them, but on this case, there's no arrow on it. So, uh, I'll just have the writing facing towards me, I think. We also get our brand new water pump, as you can see here. Well, this one, although it's a gate, the other one had a metal impeller on it. And this one's got a plastic impeller on it. So there you go. Whether that's uprated or what, I don't know. So this come from a reputable deal. I didn't just get this off of eBay. So the O-ring goes in there like that make sure that is seated in there now you may want to put a drop of silicone in there let's just smear a drop of silicone around there uh, i'm not going to really bother i don't think it needs it so um, i'm going to leave it as it is we've got a brand new tensioner and again same as uh before used and new so there's a new tension to go on we've got our brand new large and small idler pulleys and the one on the back has got a little clip on it because there is a little bushing that sits in the back there make sure you, you put that in and make sure that stays in there that's just a protection to hold it on there so that's them two pulleys we've also got new bolts here as well I would imagine that one is for the um, idler mechanism I'm not too sure what these two are for. Could it be the um, crankshaft pulley? New crankshaft pulley bolt maybe, but you've got two there, look. I suppose it would do it if I looked at the instructions, wouldn't it? Now they do give you a sticker here, which a lot of people don't normally bother with. And it's a sticker where you can uh, fill in 
date and also the amount of miles that you've got for the uh, new belt to go on. I'll just do my own one. I've got one step further. I've just created a new timing belt and water pump, 19th of April 2021, 77,000 miles. And I'll just stick that somewhere under the, uh, maybe on the bonnet, top of the bonnet, I'm not too sure yet. So that's that. Oh, I see, right, yeah. So they give you two two bolts there. I didn't realize they were both different, actually. They, they look the same to me, where are they? So these are crankshaft bolts, and one of them is different than the other. You can see the thread pitches are different. So you just got to find out what your original one was, and you can use, obviously, either one of them, and that's exactly what that is. So we've got everything in the kit now. Everything's as it should be. I've cleaned up the face of the pulley with some uh, wire wool, not the pulley, the, the face of the um, water pump housing on the inside with some wire wool, so that is totally spotlessly clean. And provided we talk these down correctly, there shouldn't be no leaks anyway, so uh, that's okay there. We better start the reassembly. Let's get on with it. Right, so as you can see in there, it's absolutely lovely in there now, nice and clean. I've cleaned it, as I said to you, with uh, some wire wool. Now, if the old gas, if that was all sort of corroded in there, which it isn't, I may have put some silicone in there, but uh, the one that come out didn't have it on, so, and it's sealed perfectly, so I'm going with the, uh, the bare bones. They never come with silicone anyway, so it just seals on the O-ring normally, so let's get that put in. Right, so I'm just gonna get a bit of the old uh, lubrication water there. Just put it around there. It can only go in one way because you've got little lug down there that it marrows up with. Easier to put them in from the bottom here, I think, personally. Ah, right, okay, water pump in. That back bolt in there was a right pig because this plastic casing pushes against the washer and you've got to struggle to get that in. So anyway, that's in now. I've tightened them up and I'm now going to fit the guide pulleys or the jockey wheels or whatever you want to call them. The large one, as you well know, goes on the left-hand side and the small one goes on the right-hand side. So let's put them in. Right, so here's our tensioner mechanism. And as I said before, that little lug there goes into a little hole down in the body. I'll try and show you that if I can. Right, so there's the hole there. As you can see, that's the bolt hole for the actual tensioner. And as long as that little lug goes into that hole, you're gonna be okay. Right, let's just hand tight that. It's on, but just literally hand tight so I can rotate by putting my Allen key in there. Right, so I've just checked the crankshaft marks and they're still lined up, so I'm happy with that. Right, so we're now going to put the belt back on and we'll drop that through there first of all and making sure we put our crankshaft sensor through the belt. I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to put the belt on the lower part of the pulley. So I've just put the belt on the lower pulley there, as you can see. There you go. And I've just wedged the screwdriver in here just so the belt can't drop down. So that's just sitting in there like that. Now, as you can see there, my timing marks are off. There's me little knots there, but this one's dropped down. So I'm just gonna bring this one back round so they're both in line again, and then I'll start putting the belt on from the exhaust side first, work my way around and get it on that way. You may find this, you see, when I'm bringing it into line, look, the, the pull is trying to pull itself back down again. So you may have to just hold that in place until, until you get the uh, belt on. That's the beauty of having them blocks, you see, but as I say, our ones, for some reason, didn't fit. Now, because I'm, I haven't got the proper blocks here and that sprocket keeps trying to turn, I'm gonna have to get someone to hold that sprocket in place because it keeps trying to fight me and I, can't, I haven't got three hands, you see. If we had them blocks in there, that wouldn't be a problem because you have you're obviously both hands. So I'm gonna need Gary or someone to come along just to hold that under tension so I can pop the belt over the tensioner. All right, so I've pulled him out of the log cabin. So all he's got to do is literally just hold that belt because that slack is the slack that I need down there, you see. So, because I haven't got that block, We've got to make do with what we got. Right, so see the timing marks there? That's the first one. See that one that's down there? Yeah. That's got to be horizontal. So if you just hold that on there like that, push it upwards a little bit. Go on, that's it. Right, so they're in line there, right? You happy with that? Yeah. Keep that, don't let go of it. I'm gonna get that on 
that's square. Right, hold it like that, right? So don't move anything else. Just don't put any more tension on that. I don't want it to turn. So while you're doing that, I'm going down there to try and put that belt on now. Right, so the easiest way I found to do that was to take the tensioner back off and then slide the belt over the tensioner and then push it back in. So I'm just making sure that my little lug's in my hole, which it is. Right, now I've got to tension the belt up. Make sure the lines are lined up. Right, so my lines are lined up there. My timing mark's lined up at the bottom, so all I've got to do now is tension the um, the jockey mechanism in there, and we should be good to go. And then tighten up my um, tighten up my big nut. Right, I'm just bringing it up now. Hold on. Just lining my pointer up. It's a new belt. Right now, tighten it up. Let's take that out. Right, so that's it. Belt is now adjusted. Now what I'm going to do now, just rotate the crankshaft twice. Right, so that's it tensioned up now, so I'm just going to rotate the crankshaft two times uh, and see if my lines all line up, so I'm going to do that now. Okay then, so I've rotated the crank round twice. And I'm hoping you can see that the uh, bottom timing marks on the pulley in the case are lined up. And if we look through there, I'm sure you can see that both inlet and exhaust camshafts are lined up as well. So that's the timing done. The belt is tensioned nicely. Nothing's rubbing anywhere. So that's fantastic. So we're basically back on now. The center bolt is now tightened up from the cam belt tensioner. So that's all well and good. But we've needed two people because we didn't have our camshaft locking tool. Right, so I'm gonna go on now, put the lower pulley on, put the lower casing on now, put the engine mount back. I'm gonna put you on a bit of time lapse for this because it's just straightforward stuff now. You've seen it all as I took it apart. I'll see you shortly. Okay, we're very nearly there now. All we've got to put on now is the um, the air filter box, connect up the electrics for the mass airflow sensor, and uh, then we'll be able to start it up and see if it's all all right. There we go. That goes in there like that. Right, I think we've just finished. Just have a little tidy up. Get the tools up off the floor. And I'll give it a start up in a second. Just to make sure that everything's okay. Right, I haven't put the engine cover on yet. I'm just gonna leave that off because I wanna have a good look around. Make sure everything's okay. So we'll go for a start up, shall we? Here we go, folks. There we go. 
Now it's still got the issue with the running, which we're going to have to sort out, but at least it started. Everything looks okay down there. Although it seems to be ticking over pretty smooth. When I blip the throttle, but that's another issue we're going to sort out is the running thing. It could be the mass airflow sensor, I don't know. It could be an air leak. Um, as I say, but it's very sluggish on performance. It could be a blocked air filter, it could be a blocked fuel filter, one of those things, but we'll be sorting it out in the up and coming video. But now we guaranteed that we've got a nice brand new water pump, cam belt, tensioner mechanism is all brand new. So we can stick that up there. There we go. Now we know. New timing belt and water pump, 19th April 2021, 77,000 miles. And there we go. We did come across a few problems, stuff you shouldn't really encounter. I did buy the correct kit for this, so I was told, but there's no instructions that come with that cam locking kit at all, although I knew about the locking the cam at the back, but them little blocks to hold the cam in position at the front didn't fit, obviously, because we had a bit of webbing in between, so I'm not too sure about that. But there are ways to get over the problem, as we did, as you saw, but you may need two people to hold that uh, inlet cam in place, because it does try to rock forward, and that will throw you out your timing marks out so there we go we didn't use the timing mark adjustment tools as I thought we would have to do I could have saved myself some money there but I wanted to try and bring that to you to show you how to use them but I couldn't do that so there you go anyway hope you've enjoyed this video folks don't forget if you do like my videos check out me uh, other playlists on my channel hit the subscribe button down there ring that little notification bell and set your preferences to all that way you'll get notified every time I upload a video plenty more to come yet on this I've spent probably about 230 240 pounds at the moment my budget was £300 and we've got to, to get it running smoothly and we've also got to get the uh, bodywork bits done as well. So that's what's coming up in the near future. Keep watching folks and I'll see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.